Hey, afternoon, everyone. <coughs> so, uh, first and foremost, uh, I think today we're going to be uh, a bit short because I don't think we're going to spend too much time online. Uh, I mean, online listening to um, a class session. But uh, a few things before I start. First, um, if you have received my um, forwarded uh, email from our own um, Timbalan Net Chancellor TNC on academic and international uh, relations um, uh, he mentioned that probably we are going to do online classes uh, for the rest of the semester so that that kind of um, uh, changes our game plan a bit but um, I think we can do this um, it's just I think we, we just need um, some sort of um, uh, mental realignment I would say um, that is one so for those of you who ask about uh, what week this is I, I, I don't think we, we are counting weeks like we used to do before so last time when uh, before PKP was week 5 but I think um, they're gonna because they are extending the, the, the semester so I don't think those week numbers gonna um, uh, is not going to matter anymore so that's one okay uh, on the class itself so today we are going to um, get into our new topic uh, which is uh, I think it was chapter 6 chapter 6 is on orbital determination so I've posted a, the lecture notes already so if you look at um, uh, the uh, our virtual classroom channel so you look for pre preliminary orbital determination so that is my uh, a note uh, uh, well the notes for for today and for the next uh, few sessions and uh, ignore this first because this is uh, some uh, uh, something that we have to do um, for the for the chapter is sort of a, like a, a project of some sort but uh, ignore that later on I uh, will gonna re revisit that um, but what I want you to probably do now or after the session is I, I think I've promised you to give you some exercises on orbital perturbation yeah on the sun synchronous orbit um, on the third body perturbation atmospheric drag um, J2 perturbation and all that so I've uh, I think I found some uh, good questions uh, which I think if you if you look at it I've posted the solutions as well so look at the questions look at the solutions and I uh, hopefully you can uh, gain better understanding on the topic um, with this um, well uh, uh, everything is in these slides so take a look at that um, and most importantly um, try and do the questions I think it's just uh, uh, let me see for what, what I've done here okay type of question on uh, well if you need to look at the uh, third body perturbation you know I've already I've only given you some um, uh, formulas on how to calculate um, the changes of um, uh, your node your node regression per day your uh, perigee advance per day so these are some uh, examples uh, atmospheric drag um, one thing I need to tell you here is this um, if you notice um, the Delta a revolution okay Delta P revolution and Delta V revolution here okay what it means is Delta is uh, always Delta always means the change of so in this case is the change of semi major axis per revolution okay so if you look at this answer here you get delta a 
um, sub revolution minus 16.2 meter so this means that the semi major axis is changing minus 16.2 meter per orbital revolution that means every time it's orbiting the earth it will lose 16.2 meter in altitude okay so as you can see over a day it will just spiral down to earth so delta a revolution means the change of semi major axis um, uh, per revolution the same thing with uh, delta p revolution also this means that the orbital period is decreasing in every revolution so in this case is decreasing uh, 0 0.0199 second each revolution all right and if you look at this both are minus so that means it's decreasing but if you look at this one here delta v revolution which means the change of velocity per revolution is a positive number which means that it's actually gaining speed as the orbital is decaying okay so you can see if uh, if i can uh, uh, you know uh, demonstrate to you here that if a satellite is experiencing an atmospheric drag um, as you know the orbital will, uh, the, uh, the orbit will decay the semi major axis will decrease over time with this amount and the period is also changing over time by this amount um, as the orbit is decaying um, the revolution uh, sorry uh, the speed of the orbit is also decreasing because you remember um, the uh, um, as as your orbit is smaller the velocity is higher okay that is for um, how much your orbit is decaying over time now you know your orbit will decay can you actually estimate the satellite's lifetime that mean if it's um, if it's on a certain altitude and it has certain uh, ballistic coefficients you know a drag coefficient you know mass you know the shape as uh, certain shapes can we actually estimate the satellite's lifetime um, yes, we can do that by using this formula right here. Lifetime, satellite's lifetime is denoted by L. Okay. And this delta A revolution, you're familiar with this. This came from before here. Here. This formula right here. Okay. And H is something... Uh, it exists in, on a, in a you can find a value in a table so I give you a link here and um, you can also um, I think this is the simplest one actually they uh, I think he uh, this person got it from a textbook which is it's just famous textbook in, in, in uh, if you're learning um, Larson Woods space mission analysis it's usually called SMAD so um, if you click on this link it will bring you to a, a, a table where you can find the value H okay and H is dependent um, on the uh, altitude of your satellite it's not the altitude itself but it's uh, it's a value that is dependent on the On the altitude so uh, you can get also the table from this textbook right here but I've already given you this link and you can refer to that one uh, do you have any question in the moment can you please respond using your mic so that I can hear you you're still alive in front of the computer
any questions here? So the next one is on the J2 perturbation. You can refer to that as well um, for um, question on, um, well, how does J2 perturbation affects your orbit? Um, and finally, those these two last question is an open, um, uh, open as in uh, no solutions provided, but you can uh, look at the question and then um, try to answer that using what you've known from the, what you've learned from the past um, uh, online session that we did okay so what you need to do is probably you can't uh, this is all for view only so maybe if you want to do it if you can you can copy everything here and then um, post it uh, sorry and paste it on your own Google slides yeah okay so that's for uh, our uh, revision exercise for the past topic so I uh, I think uh, before you forget before you we move on to the more complicated stuff probably you, uh, you should uh, do that one first doors are simple yeah so today's um, uh, we are going to a new chapter so in this new chapter is we are going to apply almost everything that we've known before so uh, our knowledge on um, um, orbital uh, how to describe um, orbits in three dimension space um, uh, the orbital elements um, the coordinate frames so we need to know all about that one so why is this important okay first um, it is basically the objective of this uh, chapter is to determine um, satellites, the orbit of the satellite when it is observed from the Earth. Okay, we want to determine the orbit. I think we have done this before. We've done this, um, but the way we have done it is a bit different. We were given the positional vector and also the velocity vector. And then we were asked to find the orbital elements. So actually, this is what this is also a type of orbital determination. We want to determine the orbit with these two information: position vectors and velocity vectors. Okay, but now it's going to be harder. We are going to determine the orbit based on our observation from Earth. So let's say you are on Earth like this and you're sitting on this um, uh, uh, location on Earth, okay? And then let's say you saw an object in the sky. And you know it's a celestial object. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a satellite. Maybe it's an artificial one, an artificial one, or a natural one. But you want to be able to determine its orbit. Okay, you want to know what kind of orbit it is, how fast it's moving, and all that. So in this chapter, is basically all about this object tracking, and I call this preliminary because. First, we are only considering a two-body motion. That means we assume that all the bodies that we see, uh, that, that we track, uh, is obeying the two-body motion. We are not going into three-body motion. We are not going to, um, I, I don't think we are going to dive too deep into orbital perturbation as well. So, so this, this is why it's called preliminary orbit determination. However, this is a fundamental 
skills, fundamental knowledge in astrodynamics and all uh, space engineers need to know at least the basic orbit determination. Okay, so there are a few uh, big topics I would say um, in this chapter. First, I would like to introduce to you about Julian Day. Next thing is sidereal time, what it is. Okay, and uh, we are going to learn new coordinate systems. Okay, before we've seen the geocentric inertial, geocentric frame, okay, which we treat usually as the inertial frame. We have also looked into perifocal frame. Okay, all right. But now we are going to look at uh, into topocentric coordinate system. Topocentric means, uh, well, you can imagine it. If you're on the surface of the Earth, that's your coordinate systems. Okay, and then uh, I think we've seen this before: ascension and declination angle. Um, if you remember, the ascension angle is denoted as um, alpha, and declination angle is denoted as delta. And uh, another uh, two angles, which we, uh, we call azimuth and elevation. We're going to see those later on. But for today, um, I think uh, we are just going to look into what we call Julian date. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's look back. Okay. Oh, what's happening just now? Anyway, so if you were to determine the orbit elements of a space object, I think the one of the most fundamental things you need to know is also how to you know, denote time. Okay, so in astronomy and also in astrodynamics, we use what we call Julian date. Okay, We don't use date like this, 2005, 2020. Okay? Uh, we don't use uh, you know, 13th of September, uh, 1974, something like that. We don't use this. Okay? We don't use this kind of format. This is probably you. Uh, uh, this is what is familiar uh, to us, but for astronomers and astrodynamicists, we use what we call Julian date. So basically, Julian date is you can imagine it uh, like a you know timeline like this. Okay. Um, we call Julian day number is the number of days since noon universal time. On January 4713 BCE. So let's say we start here. This is January 14713 BCE. So this is the day we start counting the Julian day number. So as you go on to, let's say, today, for example, you can imagine the number is going to be big. For example, I give here a Julian date of. Uh, two million four hundred fifty four uh, one one five point zero five four eight six. That means this number means the it's this date here, Sunday fourteenth of January two thousand seven, at uh, one eighteen uh, fifty nine point nine in universal time. So if I give you this number, then you can tell the date already. So you can see from here, it's very useful if you are tracking some, something like, for example, if you're tracking an asteroid or a comet, for example. So you don't use your common date format because it will be confusing. Um, you use something that is called Julian date, which will give you this one number here, right here. Okay. Um, the reason this is useful is because, well, you can, let's say you have an observation on this date. And you have an observation of 
and then this date here okay so you don't have to actually count you know leap years you don't have to count the different days of the month all you need to do is just know the julian date of this point here and this point here and you can find the difference of julian date here okay so think of it as a another date format where it starts from january 1st for 713 bce and then it goes on um, until today okay um so if you want to read this uh, there's some gun reads but i don't really recommend thinking of it this way because you're not re actually required to to do this but if you need a quick um uh, a formula on how to calculate uh, the difference of julian julian date between uh, the difference between two julian dates you can use this it's, uh, it's pretty useful as well um, and the next thing we need to know is actually how to to actually calculate julian day or julian date okay let's go to the next so the formula is well pretty simple you need to look at two things one is uh, this is what we call j naught uh, uh, so it's a well there's a, a long formula for that but I need to focus on this one universal time okay so because you as you probably know that we have different time zones um, over the world so if I were to um, mention uh, time which is uh, applicable in general to all especially astronomer, astronomers and astrodynamicists what should I use so we don't use Malaysian time. We don't use uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, U.S. time, uh, whatever. We don't. We pick the universal time. So if you want to know the time right now, just time. Uh, just uh, type in Google um, universal time now, and you will get something in the twenty-four hour format. Okay. So um, and. Uh, that's what UT stands for and J naught is uh, this formula right here and before I get into this formula right here I will just attend to any question if you have one let's see okay hmm you're online but also idle okay I see <laughs> all right I'll just continue then Oh wait, uh, yes. Okay, so to calculate Julian Day, you need this term right here, J naught, and you need the universal time of um, whatever time you're, you're looking for um, at the moment. Okay, so let's look at J naught here. The formula is pretty lengthy, but um, if I can, uh, I need to uh show you some things yeah here let me use the right one so y m and d refers to year month and day so dependent on your date today for example if your date today is say 20th of May 2020 so your Y will be 2020 your M will be 5 and your day will be 20 okay so if you need to look at the Julian day today so just plug in these values into this formula okay so those M D and Y what about this one here INT what is it okay INT is a function that takes only the integer portion of X okay 
say for example you calculate this okay you calculate 27 uh, 275 times 5 over 9 and say you've got a number okay and I show you an, uh, an example here but let me rewrite that example here let's say your number is inside here let's say it's uh, speak 9.673 okay then this function will only take the integer part be careful not to round off although this the next value here is 6 and usually what you do is just you, you round the number off to 10 but no the integer function is what you do is you just take the integer portion of this thing so that means integer of 9.673 is just 9 okay uh, another example if you have uh, So if you have uh, a negative number, for example, 4110, okay, you still take the integer part of it, which is minus 4. So if you calculate anything here, whatever integer you got, you put that number there. Here, the same thing here. There's another integer function here. And there's another integer function here. Okay. So for that so that's how you find j naught once you find this number here put it up here find the equivalent universal time of that the moment whatever whenever that is divide by 24 so this universal time is in 24 hour format yeah okay and then you'll find the Julian date of the day all right so um you can try um uh, finding the julian date of now which is now 2 23 p 2 33 pm this is malaysian time and date today is 20th of may 2020 and you can try find jd okay so that is an exercise for you okay so uh, this is it for Julian date now why is this important is because we are going to need Julian date to help us in um, finding the orbital elements of the space objects that we are tracking Okay, we're going to do that later on, but I'm just going to show you bit by bit here. So the first thing that you need to know is how to calculate Julian date um, uh, or the Julian day of a moment. For example, uh, you, you, you say probably 1.51 p.m. Malaysian time on certain certain date. You need to find that Julian uh, date at that time. So this is the formula. Okay. And... Uh, that is it for Julian Day. It's not too complicated. It's just you have to work with a formula. Okay. Let me see if there's any question. Oh, Lee and Shada is asking here. Yeah. You. Uh, yes, Lee. You can actually get the universal time. Um, Google if you if you don't know how to calculate that. Um, I think that's the easiest way to find universal time. Yeah. Uh, what is int? No. Um, uh, int. Uh, to answer uh, Shada's question, how do we know int for the current time? We uh, no int is just a function of uh, a number. So uh, when you are dealing with this formula here, okay, it it doesn't have anything to do with time int. Wait, what is, what is happening? Where's my eraser? Okay, it doesn't have anything to do with time. INT is just, uh, uh, you know, it's a function like a sine function or cosine function, uh, you know, absolute value. What you do is you basically you only uh, is if, let me 
erase everything here okay let me give you an example yeah let's say uh, uh, you you have uh, let's let's take this one here int uh, 275 m divided by 9 let's say you want to calculate that okay uh, let's say your m is uh, I don't know your m is maybe uh, five let's take this month here so let's uh, calculate do we have a calculator here of course we do all right so you need to know 275 times 5 divided by 9 what is it for 142.7777 okay so so let's see one four two point seven 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 eight okay so what you need to do is just this function is just take just take the integer part of that you don't have you you can ignore the rest of the the value here the rest of the numbers here okay so this will become 142 so here if you calculate that if you put 5 here then this whole thing will become 142 so it's just a simple of whatever number you got in the in the in the parentheses here you just take the integer okay yeah yeah yes correct correct okay all right uh okay so we have covered the first part julian date now here i just want you i just um to introduce you to sidereal time i think that's how it's pronounced sidereal time not sidereal i mean um that's how i've heard some uh, 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 some some students are trying to pronounce it but it's sidereal time okay so let's uh, zoom a bit here all right so sidereal time what is it actually okay you would imagine that um uh, let me ask you this how would you calculate one day how would you calculate a day okay so the 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 usual way i would say usual because i'm i'm assuming that we <laughs> We use this uh, method every day the usual day is this we let's say um, uh, we ask we know the position of the Sun okay at one point here say at the horizon okay this is the position of the Sun and then the Sun of course is gonna move later on and then tomorrow the same and at the end of the road we see the sun at the same spot again okay after 24 hours right so let's say this is at the end of the road you see the sun here okay 24 hours later you will see the sun at the same spot again so we consider this one day we know it's 24 hours the sun is coming back to its position just like yesterday so 20 we know that 24 hours has um, has passed so here this one we call this um, we call this one solar day that means we calculate day using the Sun okay and astronomers or someone like us aerospace engineers who are dealing with satellites and space objects and stuff we don't use the Sun to calculate our day we use the stars it's kind of weird because well one reason is uh, well the stars is a I think it's, it's a it's, it's a more well in my opinion it's a more accurate way to measure the full rotation of the earth okay uh, so in astronomers use a distant star 
it doesn't use the sun so let's fix uh, let's say the at the end of the horizon is a star some star far away okay and then you will wait for until tomorrow until you see the star at the same spot again it turns out that if you use a star the duration the sorry the the, the temporal distance is actually 23 hours 56 minutes about 4 seconds I think I think it's 9.5 seconds about 4 seconds yeah it doesn't it's a bit short of one solar so we call this one sidereal day okay so in orbit determination we don't use 24 hours to calculate one day one day for us is one sidereal day it's 23 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds I'm not too sure about this last number here because I think uh, I've seen some some numbers but let's just use that at the moment okay so one sidereal day is about 23 hours 46 minutes and 4 seconds yeah sorry uh, yeah 4 seconds okay so if you can see here i've i've got this from wikipedia i hope this is more i hope this can help you with the understanding what, what's the difference between solar day and uh, sidereal day okay all right so i've wrote here what's the difference between one sidereal day and one solar day well one solar day is relative to the sun just like this now okay it's 24 hours but uh, one sidereal day is relative to the starts to the stars okay 23 hours 56 minutes 9.5 seconds yeah i think this is the correct number i think this is the correct number uh let, let me recheck for you a bit because here in this um wikipedia picture it tells something else it's four. well let me check again that one yeah but that's the difference between sidereal day and sidereal time Sidereal day is a time uh, we uh, it, that is uh, relative to the stars, okay. Distant stars, and solar time, like what we use every day, that that is um, relative to the sun. Although the sun is the stars, but in this case we separate those two, okay. So, uh, in the next uh, lesson, what we're going to look at is. Uh, we're going to look at how we can actually find the local sidereal time a time scale that is based on earth rate earth's rate of rotation measured relative to the fixed stars okay uh, let's just imagine that it's more accurate that way okay so but for this moment i think what we've covered is these two one is to how to calculate the julian day and number two, what is actually sidereal day and how is it different from solar day? Okay. So I think for today's lesson, uh, let's stop right here. We will continue the rest of the story here. Uh, I think probably after Raya next week. Okay. I'll tell you when. Uh, just to give you a sneak peek, this is how to calculate local sidereal time. And as you probably know, if you're working with space mechanics, you need to do a lot of algorithm. Uh, you need to do all complex equation. You cannot do anything anymore with the calculation with pen and paper. Okay? Because that's not practical anymore. You got to use some kind of programming. Spreadsheet is fine. Okay? But yes, like I said, it will be crazy for you to do this on pen and paper, pen and paper, and you, I think, you also will hate this if I ask you to calculate all this in in an exam. So I won't do that for you. Um, we'll also look at the uh, how do I understand azimuth and elevation, okay? Because when you're standing on the Earth, you are not actually on the geocentric initial coordinate frame. It's hard for you. You are standing on the surface of the Earth. So you've got to use this uh, angle observation, 
Okay, so the short one azimuth is the angular distance from north to where you are pointing. Let's say you're pointing to a sun here. If you can calculate the angle distance from north to the position of the sun, that is your azimuth angle. Okay, so that's azimuth angle. Elevation angle is the angular distance from the horizon until the position uh, until the position of the sun. So that's why it's called elevation, elevate. So how much is it elevated from the horizon? Okay. So know these two angles, azimuth and elevation, because this is important when we are going to do our observation later on. Um, uh, just this is uh, uh, what we call the topocentric equatorial coordinate system. I will introduce to you these two new systems here, horizon coordinate systems. This is important when we want to do our observation later on. Okay. Um, and then this is uh, some uh, a problem, orbit determination problem, a project which we are going to do after Raya. So I've already posted up all the um, the step by step on how to do it. But the step by step, I think it's ah uh, yeah, it's eleven steps altogether. <laughs> so you've got to do some kind of programming in this one. But let's uh, not um, uh, look at this yet because I, I have some something. Um, I think I want to do this like an, uh, a collaborative work where you work together online, perhaps, and work on uh, getting the uh, the algorithm working and getting your uh, orbit determination tool, preliminary orbit determination tool working. Okay, so that is it for today. Okay, uh, just uh, a reminder again. Hmm, I just noticed this Internet Explorer took a while to actually reload everything. Okay, so those three things are the things that uh, we can get from today. One, I think uh, you need to uh, do the exercise on um, orbital perturbation. Okay, and number two, what we've learned today is about Julian Day and how to calculate it. Okay, and number three is an introduction to sidereal day, sidereal time. Okay. Okay, so that is it for today. Uh, I would like to uh, thank everyone who participated in this. Um, uh, online session um, I think tomorrow if you ask it tomorrow we don't have any class um, but I'm always available on whatsapp if you need to